Hi, I'm Paul Spradley, and like you, I'm a parent, so I understand from firsthand experience the challenges of parenting. The Pittsburgh Child Guidance Foundation is here with help from some extraordinary partners, both experts and those with lived experiences. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this video series, Building Brighter Futures, Helping Your Kids Get Ready for School. This series was produced by the Pittsburgh Child Guidance Foundation. This nonprofit organization works to help children and teens who find themselves and their families in difficult situations. We want to help young people live their best lives, to be hopeful about their futures, and to know that they're not alone as they rise to overcome the challenges life has thrown their way. We know that to help children and teens overcome these challenges, we need to involve the entire family. Regardless of your circumstances, your children need your help. From my own experience, I know these truths. Parenting is hard, but it is extremely rewarding. We're all juggling a lot of responsibilities. As your child's first teacher, we want to remind you of the importance of starting their education as babies. With this Building Brighter Future video series, our goal is to help you find ways to incorporate good practices into your everyday life. We invite you to enjoy these videos and put these parenting tips into practice. Remember that you are your child's first and most important teacher. Together, let's build brighter futures for our children. Enjoy. In this segment, Start Early, Babies Learn Too, we meet Miss Elizabeth, an extraordinary educator with many years of experience. She explains why it's important for parents to start educating their children before they go to school. She shows us ways to incorporate language and math exercises into our daily routines. Collaboration is important. Once your child goes to school, it's important to collaborate with their teachers for the best possible outcomes. Miss Elizabeth has some great tips on collaborating. Let's watch. I think a long time ago, it was okay for parents to wait to get them into kindergarten. Now with the way the world is and how things are changing, those early childhood years are so very important. Things that they're learning in kindergarten, they used to learn in first and second grade. So to help the child really be on par with their peers, early learning is so important. If you're not able to put your child in a preschool program or a child care setting, there are so many things that you can just do at home. You can take them to your local library. It's free. A lot of them have story times that you can participate in. You can check out books, take them home. You can cook with your child as you're making meals. They'll learn all those wonderful math skills. Uh, they also learn patience because things take a long time to bake. Uh, when you're outside, you know, take them outside, let them experience the world, take them to parks. Parks are also wonderful because they're going to, to interact with their peers, get some of that great social emotional learning that, that happens when kids get together and they learn how to navigate, how to share a toy in the sandbox or how to wait their turn to go down the slide. You can take them to events that are around the city where you live. You can meet other local families via social media and kind of start to form your tribe and, and do some play dates with them. And again, they're gonna learn all of those social emotional skills that are gonna help them when they enter kindergarten. Educating your own children is is difficult. Children always act differently for their parents and their close contacts than they do when they go and they, they're in school for a teacher. Um, I always encourage parents to take a deep breath and to have patience. And it's okay if your child doesn't get it the first time. They don't get it the first time when I teach something. Um, and, and that's okay. That doesn't mean that you're failing as a parent. It is just how children learn. And they are going to need things repeated to them five, 10, 20 times. I always encourage parents to start out small. So put your cell phone down and um, just give yourself five minutes of pure interaction with your child. So really let that child lead the play and uh, let them kind of tell you what they wanna do. As parents and adults, it's, 
we always want to interject our thoughts and our feelings into what they should be doing and what how they should be playing and put that block here because you know that if they put the block where they want to put the block, their tower is going to fall. But it is so important to allow children the experience of letting their building fall. That's how they learn and that's how they're going to figure it out on their own. So just starting out small with them and just setting aside a few minutes a day of giving your undivided attention to what they're actually doing and, and listening to what they're doing. And it's okay if you as the parent don't talk during that interaction. Um, it's really all about the child and what the child is doing. And then it's also okay, I always wanna remind families, it's okay to be silly. Kids love it when their mom and their dad are laughing with them. And it is okay when you're playing with those dolls to take on a different role and to have a different voice for the different dolls or the different action figures that you're playing with. Kids love it when their grown-ups can get silly. And that reminds them too that they can be silly. And they're always learning, even though you're playing with action figures. The children are beginning all of those early literacy skills. They are learning how to create a story. The very first thing that parents can do when they want their child to learn how to read is to talk to their child. Oral language, skills develop. So as you're moving about your day and you have an infant, talk to them about what you're doing. Tell them like, oh, I'm going to put this egg in the bowl and mix it with a fork. Start just narrating your day. And then um, the children hear all of those wonderful words and it starts to build their vocabulary, which then helps them whenever you begin reading with them. Books are so important and it is so important to read with your child because you're going to expose them to words that they don't hear in everyday language. And always when you're reading with your child, stop and ask them questions. Do you know what that word means? What does it mean to scramble? and kind of um, allow them the opportunity to think for a moment. What does that word mean? And um, talk about what you see on the page. Even if they're you know, 12 months old, talk about the fact that you see a bear on the page. And what is that bear doing? That bear is going outside. That bear is sleeping in a cave. So talk to them what you um, are seeing and observing on the page just building upon their imagination, which is so important for children. And always set aside time to read to them. Make it part of your routine, whether you read to them in the morning, whether you read to them after dinner, whether you read to them before you go to bed, just make it part of your routine. Thank you, Miss Elizabeth, for such great advice. Practice the tips Miss Elizabeth gave us. Your child's education starts long before they go to preschool or kindergarten. So start early by incorporating language and math into your daily routine. It's okay to let your child make small mistakes. This is how we all learn. Through play with others, children learn social skills, being kind to others, making friends and sharing. Collaborate with your child's teacher to achieve the best possible outcome. Remember that learning new things is hard, so be patient. Thanks so much for watching. We hope this was helpful.